If you've been doing a very low-fat, low-protein, high-carbohydrate diet for any length of time, the potato diet, the rice diet, the starch solution, the sugar diet, fruit till full, the question of beans and lentils may have come up in your mind. To bean or not to bean? That is the question. Are beans who are high in protein? If you're an avid follower of the YouTube weight loss trends, you may have heard that low-protein diets activate the powerful appetite-reducing, metabolism-boosting, and fat-burning hormone, FGF21. And this has been used as one of the reasons why many people are able to break plateaus with the sugar diet, with the potato diet, with the rice diet. So the question is, will I ruin FGF21 if I eat more beans and lentils? Won't that mean I'll get too much protein? Would that mean I would ruin the optimal metabolic state induced by the FGF21 hormone? In this video, I'll present scientific and anecdotal evidence that shows that we don't have to apply the same level of strictness to plant proteins as the level of strictness we have to apply to animal proteins, i.e. we can eat more plant protein and get away with it and still be able to activate FGF21, i.e. the most important factor for activating FGF21 is restriction of animal protein, not necessarily protein per se. And this is exciting because it means we could add more variety to our meal. It would alleviate concerns about getting enough protein for muscle building or for our skin, etc. So now let's have a look at the evidence. It is becoming increasingly clear from the mounting accumulation of studies that plant protein is much safer metabolically than animal protein in the context of a higher carbohydrate diet. For example, in a 16-week clinical trial with overweight adults, increasing plant protein and reducing animal protein led to decreases in fat mass and improvements in body composition. This is without any conscious calorie restriction at all. And there are, of course, multiple studies which show that a higher plant protein intake and a lower animal protein intake consistently associates better health outcomes, lower body weight, and better longevity. But the question for me for a long time has been, although it is quite clear that plant protein is healthier in a high carbohydrate context, is plant protein better than very low protein? Considering what we know about very low protein diets, activating the potent longevity and weight loss inducing hormone, FGF21, as a reminder, the FGF21 hormone is a very important hormone which determines how much body fat we carry and many health outcomes alongside leptin, thyroid and the GLP-1 hormone are the four important hormones which regulate body fat. These are the hormones which matter when it comes to body fat regulation. The idea that insulin spikes regulate body fat is not supported by scientific evidence whatsoever. This is just the old guesswork of low-carb diet gurus, and it has grown into a myth which has been perpetuated throughout the diet guru world without questioning the scientific basis. The FGF21 hormone, on the other hand, is very well supported by the science as a hormone which does regulate body fat, and it does so by increasing the metabolic rate and energy expenditure, whilst reducing food cravings and appetite, by increasing muscle preservation and prioritizing fat burning, it improves health in multiple ways throughout the body. Several studies have made it very clear that a very low protein diet is one pathway to increasing FGF21 hormone signaling. However, it is clear that the low protein pathway is not the only way to increase FGF21 levels. For example, short chain fatty acids produced by gut bacteria feeding on fiber, increase FGF21 levels. Fructose increases FGF21 levels. And even low-carbohydrate diets can increase FGF21 levels. Phytochemicals, the GLP-1 hormone, and certain plant-based proteins also increase FGF21 levels. Complete protein restriction does not have dominion over the FGF21 hormone. As I have described in previous videos, many people do achieve great fat loss results with a very protein-restricted diet. There are many reports of people having excellent success with protein-restricted diets, 
such as the rice diet, the potato diet, and especially for the higher fruit and sugar approach. However, this very protein-restricted approach does require a certain amount of strictness. And because there is quite a lot of restriction to this diet, many people find it too strict to be able to stick to it for a longer time. Certainly, the higher fruit, higher sugar approach is very effective for peeling off stubborn body fat. But this is realistically only something that you can do for short periods of time. An alternative approach, which many find easier, which kicks in faster, and is far more long-term doable, and which many people are reporting success with, is to be more liberal with beans, legumes, and other plant proteins. It turns out that plant proteins have a very different effect in the gut than animal proteins. So, although the restriction of animal proteins has a big effect to improve FGF21 levels and FGF21 sensitivity, it appears that we don't have to apply the same level of strictness with plant proteins. Although I knew this was theoretically a possibility, there weren't enough N equals 1s out there for me to get really confident about this. However, there are now accumulating more and more reports from people experimented and compared high-carb, low-fat, low-protein to high-carb, low-fat, high plant protein. And some are reporting better results. For example, two of my favourite diet experimenters, Latchkey Gen Xer and the truck driver Sweet Trucken, amongst others, have experimented with more plant protein on a high-carb, low-fat diet. They have both been including more beans and legumes, and Latchkey Gen Xer has even been increasing tofu and textured vegetable protein, which sounds gross, but is actually quite nice if you prepare it properly. They have both reported better satiety, less food noise and cravings, higher energy levels, and outstanding fat loss results. Sweet Trucken reported feeling more satiated with beans and chickpeas compared to his other high-carb excursions, potato diets and sugary juice fasting. He and Latchkey Gen Xer appeared to achieve similar or even better results for weight loss as that which they achieved on very low protein, higher sugar or higher starch-based diet. The higher plant protein did not appear to ruin the boosted metabolism, the reduced appetite and the impressive weight loss. Some people who have a more stubborn metabolism may find that they have to do the higher sugar, higher fruit-based approach to peel off the last 10 to 15 pounds. However, for most people, I do believe that most people will be able to get good results from this higher plant protein approach on a high carb, low fat diet. It makes this way of eating more varied, more enjoyable, more long term doable. And as I have explained, many people are reporting that they feel more satiated, which is ultimately the most important thing determining whether you'll be able to stick to the diet. So how is it that people are reporting these FGF21-like effects of increased metabolic rate, increased energy expenditure, improved weight loss, fat burning, muscle preservation, whilst eating these higher plant protein foods, even without having to go very low protein? I have discussed in a previous video that the reason low protein diets actually boost FGF21 levels is because they starve bad bacteria of their essential fuel, sulfur-based proteins. This increases GLP-1 secretion by the gut, which increases FGF-21 levels. However, there are other ways to suppress these problem bacteria besides starving them of sulfur-based proteins, i.e. protein restriction. Firstly, when we choose plant-based proteins, not only are they far lower in sulfur-based proteins than animal products, but plant-based proteins also compact with soluble fiber and phytochemicals. These plant food elements promote the growth of good bacteria whilst suppressing the growth of bad bacteria. And this positive effect on the gut microbiome is potent enough to keep the growth of the bad bacteria suppressed even in the presence of higher amounts of sulfur-based proteins, as occurs when we eat more plant protein compared to very low protein. So, despite the fact that there are more sulfur-based proteins present in the gut when we eat more plant protein, the other elements of the plant protein, the phytochemicals and the soluble fibre, 
result in a net positive for the gut, higher levels of good bacteria and suppressed levels of bad bacteria. And this is the state in the gut which increases FGF21 levels, either by starving the bad bacteria of sulfur-based proteins or by eating plant proteins which also keep levels of the bad bacteria suppressed by the soluble fibre and potent plant phytochemicals. So eating plant protein is just another pathway that we can use to get our gut bacteria into this optimal FGF21 activating state. And it's not just beans and legumes that have powerful effects to optimise the gut microbiome for weight loss. Soybean products like tofu and textured vegetable protein all also have potent regulatory effects. Soybeans contain an extremely potent gut-regulating phytonutrient, isoflavones. A meta-analysis of randomised trials found that soy products significantly reduced body weight, BMI, body fat percentage, and circumference, especially in overweight or obese people. And they attributed this mainly to the soy protein, isoflavone, and soy fiber, which all work together to optimize the gut conditions to boost FGF21 signaling. And because soy isoflavones are phytoestrogens that mildly mimic estrogen, they don't just have positive effects on body fat regulation, they also improve muscle and bone density quality. The researchers in this 2020 study in the Journal of Obesity concluded that soy isoflavones are considered a breakthrough in preventing osteosarcopenia and obesity that may occur after menopause. But the benefits are not just specific to women, the benefits occur for men as well. In fact, the benefits of soy protein are so impressive I'm going to have to do a deep dive into the specific benefits of soy isoflavones for men and women as their hormones decline with age. Make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. And there are still more benefits to increasing plant protein. Because plant proteins don't fuel the growth of bad bacteria in the way that animal proteins do, it means that we can get the well-known benefits of protein without the negative effects on gut bacteria, such as the well-known fact that when we consume protein, we burn 30% of the calories from that protein just in the process of digesting it, i.e. diet-induced thermogenesis. That is a significant amount of calories and could certainly help us to create that calorie deficit that we do need to lose weight. And there is also the fact that protein increases the GLP-1 hormone more than carbohydrates and fats do. But this is only the case with plant protein. When we consume animal protein, we fuel the growth of the bad bacteria which blocks the GLP-1 secretion. So by choosing plant protein, we can actually unleash those well-known weight loss benefits of protein without ruining it all by feeding bad gut bacteria. It is certainly worth experimenting with adding more plant protein to your diet. Monitor your satiety, your appetite and your food cravings. The best way to know if an intervention is working is your appetite and food cravings. If an intervention is working to increase GLP-1 and FGF-21, your appetite and food cravings will diminish. Your appetite and food cravings will fall. If you are hungry, unsatiated and suffering food cravings, that means that whatever you're doing is not working to increase FGF-21, GLP-1 and leptin sensitivity. However, if you are feeling satiated and free of food craving, you know that what you are doing is working to get your hormones metabolically optimized, to put your body in the optimal hormonal state for fat loss, health, and longevity. And that's not the only benefit of plant protein. All the extra soluble fiber, especially in beans and legumes, gives your diet even more of an edge. Soluble fiber, as well as feeding the good bacteria, also performs an extremely important task. It binds toxic bile in the gut, which, as I have described in my other videos, is the main culprit responsible for weight gain and poor metabolic health. If you eat enough beans and legumes, it can approach the same bile binding capacity as pharmaceutical bile binders and psyllium. It means that you can tolerate a little bit more dietary fat because some of the bile produced as a result of eating the fat gets bound up by the soluble fiber, 
preventing it from creating problems. In terms of downregulating GLP-1 secretion and FGF-21, and if we can get away with a little more fat, that would be great because there are still concerns that going super low in fat may affect hormone production and even gallstones if we go less than 20 grams a day for a long time. So you can see that in this multitude of ways, beans, legumes and other plant proteins create a net positive effect in the gut, which results in an increase in GLP-1 secretion and FGF-21 hormone signaling. So if you are struggling with adherence, with a lack of variety, with satiety, increasing your plant protein is something which I recommend experimenting with. You might want to start off with plant protein at your evening meal, and then you might want to experiment with having it at more meals. Have you already experimented with more plant protein on your high-carb, low-fat way of eating? Did you find it gave you greater satiety and weight loss? I would love to hear your experience in the comments. So, in this video, I've explained why plant protein is so much better than animal protein for the microbiome in the context of a high-carbohydrate diet. However, correcting the gut environment to optimize weight loss and health requires more than just choosing the right type of protein. The other very important thing that cannot be overlooked is dietary fat. If you would like to understand why getting dietary fat low is so important, for optimal fat loss and health on a high carbohydrate diet, please do watch this video linked on the screen right now. Hint, it's not about calorie density, it's actually about reducing toxic bile. Thank you for listening and please do subscribe if you would like to see more videos on the new science of weight loss and health. And hopefully see you in the next one.